Hi, I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft and I am so glad you've come to this video because you're going to learn something brand new about CNC router designing with your software. So this came from a, an email I got from James. He's been working on a project and asked for a little interesting twist to it. So we're going to learn about fluting today. Yeah, fluting is a very cool little technique. And James, I'm sorry, you use a different software, but maybe the concepts I'm teaching here, you'll be able to find it in your software. He uses Carveco. Um, then you'll be able to figure this out. So let's go ahead and dive in and let's get your problem solved. Okay, so this is essentially the part that James is working on. What it is is a soap dish that he's making for a customer. And the first time he emailed me, he was having some issues with his drainage ditches where on these sharp corners he was getting some breakout. So we talked about that a little bit and said reduce the depth of your cut and make more cuts and probably go faster if I remember correctly. This was about a month ago. It was uh, an email. And so he did that and I haven't heard from him since so I assume he got it fixed. However, he's got another little issue. When the soap gets set on there, <coughs> the water uh, will drain out to some degree but not all of it and so it pools up in little drainage ditches so what he wants to do is put a slope into his outflow there right now it is even with the plane of the top of the surface so water has a tendency to uh but it's got surface tension and you add the soap to it and it has more surface tension so I imagine they're getting a little build up in there and so anyway he wants to put a hill there downward slope so it can drain out now I'm gonna take this a little bit further James and what I want to do well first I'm just gonna show you how to do this slope but the other thing I'd like to do is actually slope it down from these areas as well from the center so it starts to slope down to there and then slopes down to there. So that is probably going to extend this video, but you're going to get some design tips out of this that's going to kind of blow you away and you're going to be able to do some more really cool stuff. Fluting is really interesting, as you are going to see. All right, so we are switching over to the 2D version. And James, one of the first things that I want to make sure you do, and I'm assuming you're already doing that, is your line going out needs to extend past the material so that you get a complete run out and from the looks of the pictures that he's uh, showed me the first time that's what he's done so if you are ever making cuts all the way off you need to make sure your tool runs all the way off so i've drawn those lines so that's the drawing now what we have is we got a box here and a box here and then we got two lines or I'm sorry four lines and if I go into node with an N you're gonna see a green node at this side of the line now the way that happens is or first of all what that means is that's the direction of the cut in a conventional cut you may see in your software climb or conventional and be able to take a selection on either one so this is traditionally a conventional cut and uh, conventional and climb cutting is a animal that I need to go into quite a bit of detail with I've actually want to make a video about that uh, but I'm kind of struggling as to how to make it because it's gonna require a, a bit of work and it's gonna be one of those videos that's gonna take a long time anyway let's get back to the matter at hand so uh, his his tool path is gonna start here and then it's gonna work its way out so we are going to go back over to the 3d view and we're gonna look at the 3d model now we need the other model we'll just uh, split screen so what we're gonna do is open this tool path up right now this tool path is one tool path and it's running all of these slots. And what we want to do is we're going to open it up and you can look over on the left side of my screen. Everything is highlighted. So what I want to do is only highlight the boxes for this first tool path. And that's going to make your squares. 
So we're going to click OK. And we're just going to name this square. And calculate. And I'm going to reset this and run the toolpath. OK, so there we have that. So now what we're going to do is... Oh, this is so cool. I'm so excited to teach you this. All right, so up in your toolpath area, you're going to see this little box that says fluting toolpath, and it's going to have three lines in it. So what you want to do is you want to click that, obviously. And now we are going to, over here, what the uh, squares are selected like that over on the left. First thing we're going to do is select each line. <clears throat> so I'm going to select a line. I'm going to hold shift and select, select, and select. Now you see there's green dots on each one of these. That means that the tool is going to start cutting from the inside. Now if your green dot is on the outside, I'm just going to show you real quick how to fix this. So we're going to escape out of this tool path real quick. And I am going to click on one of these lines and hit the end button for node. Now you're going to see the green dot there. If your green dot is over here, all you need to do is come to the spot that you want your tool to start at, which would be this one, and hover over it and press, um, you can right click and make start point or press P while you're hovered over it. So that's uh, how you reverse your node, your tool direction. That's one way. Now, don't get this confused with conventional and climb cutting. They're two different, very, very different animals. Okay, so we're going to go back into the fluting toolpath. And we're going to select these guys. Holding the shift down, and I'm selecting each one. And so now, the if we look in our 3D model, we are at an eighth of an inch deep right now. So we want this to start at an eighth of an inch deep. So up here, when it says start depth, you're going to change that to 0.125. And the finish depth, we're just going to go down by an eighth of an inch. So we're just going to add a 0.125 to that. And then we're going to select our tool. So we have to go into our library and select our ball nose, which is going to be an eighth inch ball nose. And the next section is where it gets a little bit interesting. So you see these three different lines, and the first one says ramp over the complete length. The second one says ramp at the start, and the third says ramp at start and end. So if I was to, well, first of all, the ramp over complete length, obviously it's a hill over the entire length of the tool path. So going back to the left of the screen, that means that from the start point here, to the end point at the last black dot is going to be a uh, downhill run. Now I have to get out of node. There we go. And I got to select these again. So the way I got out of node was by, uh, oh, wait a minute. Okay. The way I got out of node was just hit escape button. Okay, so it's going to go downhill. Starting at this point at one eighth deep, and by the time it gets out to the end of the line, it's going to be another eighth or a deep or a quarter of an inch from the surface of the material. Now, if we ramp at start, you're going to see well, first of all, when we're selected on a ramp over an entire length, you cannot edit any of these numbers right here. But when you select ramp at start, now you're going to have an opportunity to make some changes here. So you can tell how far you want that ramp to go before it hits bottom and runs out straight. Or you can give it a percentage of the line before it starts to run out straight. Now the third selection, ramp at start and end, you click that and it's going to give you the same scenario. Except what you would do is it's going to... It, in this case, it's going to ramp in 1.5 inches and continue on until the last 1.5 inches has been hit, and then it's going to start ramping back uphill. So we're going to ramp over complete length, and we're going to do a straight ramp. 
and that's selected down here in ramp type. You can do a smooth ramp or a linear ramp. So we are going to do a linear ramp. A smooth ramp is it's just going to be a nice gentle arc that comes down. And this, I'm telling you, when you start getting into designing, you, you want to play with this smooth ramp because you can do some really cool stuff. In fact, the dust shoe that I am designing, I am using this feature heavily to get the vortex created around my router bit. Okay, so we are going to go with the linear and the project toolpath at on the 3D model doesn't really matter. And we're going to name that flute. Now I am going to just click that and say OK. And now we are going to generate the toolpath, but not yet. I want to show you something. I want you to look at the toolpath lines. So this is making one, two, three, four, five passes, but each one starts at an eighth of an inch, right? here and then it comes out it makes a cut and then it goes back to the same position then it comes back out a little bit deeper and it, every time it goes back it goes back to the same position as slowly as cutting a hill into that drainage so now if we run all the tool paths and now you can see that he is or we have a hill in there. It's starting at the depth and now it's going downhill. And now we're a quarter inch deep. If I was to go back into this to exaggerate this, we're going to click in here and we're going to make this 0.7 deep and select calculate. And it says the cool tool will cut through the material. But now you see what's going on. And we're just going to run that out and see how bad it cuts through the material. Okay, so you see it starts at the top. Let's just give you a bigger screen here. It starts right at the surface there. And by the time it's done, it's all the way down at the bottom of the material. So this is how you fix this, James. Find the fluting feature and start to play with that. Now, if you don't have it, the other suggestion would be this. I'm going to switch back. And what I would do is go into 2D Toolpath. We're going to, just going to make a new one. And we are going to make a line come out like that. And I'm going to space it. And then I'm going to start a new line. So what I'm going to do is start it a little bit over. You have to do your math, but let's just assume it's a quarter inch. And then start that line and come over. But you're going to have to make that line on a different layer. And then you would start the next line. and come out. Now these lines are twisted of course, but these lines would actually go uh, along the same line. You have to do it on a different layer so you can see them and turn, turn them on and off. So that would be the other alternative, but that would be more of a step down type of feature. The next thing you could do is uh, do some goofy setups with your board where you tip it up. So, James, I hope you have fluting in your software. Now, I'm going to take this one more step, and we are going to add a couple lines just to, to create that downhill slope. So what I'm doing is I'm just creating another line that's going to connect with that one. I'm going to space, and I'm, to, I'm coming from the center because I want this to go downhill, so I want my nodes to be at that first line. And I made a mistake on that one, so I'm going to delete that, and I'm going to start that line again. And there. So this might require a little bit of math on my part, but I'm not going to do that here. So what we're going to do is create another fluting toolpath. And we are going to select these two lines. And we're going to start at the point 
one, two, five. And we're going to go uh, point zero eight. Uh, point eight. Point zero eight. I'm just kind of doing some math in my head. And we are have the one eighth ball nose. Uh, our, our, all the settings are the same. One of the things is one when you when your settings are set and you've gone through the exercise and you calculate it or whatever, when you come back into the same tool path, all the settings are going to be identical, so you'll have to just have to make the adjustments. All right, let's calculate that. We're going to run that tool path. And I'm going to fix the other one. Okay, so calculate that. i got to do uh, recalculate everything. So recalculate. Go back in, we're going to reset, and we're going to run all tool paths. Okay, so what I want to do, hey, I think I did my math pretty good. So we're just going to kind of zoom in. Oh, 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 I am good. I am good. Woohoo! That was good math. So you can see this one has gone all the way down. And what you can't tell is if it started at a different spot. So we're going to go back in there and we're just going to take it at zero. Zero. And then on the next line, I'm going to say point one two five plus point zero eight equals and we're going to close so i'm just exaggerating so i can see this we're going to reset and run all the tool paths and now you can see what a fluting does so that's pretty cool i hope james that this helps you out and if you can't do this I would dare to say this in public, but I will get that designed up for you and run the cheat code for you. So, but please don't uh, take that as an open invitation for you to make cheat codes for everybody. I just, James may not have this feature in his software. So, all right. So this is Garrett. I hope you just learned something pretty incredibly amazing in your Vectric software. This can be done on Aspire and in vCarve. Fluting is amazing. Give me a thumbs up if this helped you out, and I will talk to you next time.